Kia ora. And welcome to welcome. Gregorian Chat. Today's episode is the first one in a while. Yes. We're talking about hobbies. Yes. Hobby there for you. How to spend your time intentionally and worthwhilely. Stick around. So it's been a while, though. It's been a while, so long, that what we actually you? forgot to get tea for this podcast. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what, what is life? I'm it's just... kind of like when we first started the podcast, we had heaps of, we just, it was all about the tea. We spent a good three or four minutes just pouring the tea, talking about where we got the tea and what it, what it yeah, means. Yeah, yeah. I think we, we spent too much time looking at a, like a gimmick. We didn't look at the content enough. <laughs> yeah. But some people are content with it. Who needs content? Well, you, because you're a student. And yes. You a whole lot How is that going, by the way, being a student? Just give me a bit of a... Give me the rundown. Whoa! This chair just did something really weird. Okay, is that your... Is that what it's like, being a student? Yeah. Okay, I just... And a, and a little bit like this. I just, ah! Oh, there we go. I fixed it. There yeah. we go. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, I mean, I'm enjoying it thoroughly. I'm having a great time. Yeah. I love the, I love learning about the, the, the biology of our bodies and cells and all this. It's so fascinating, but it's also like, my first lecture is like, oh, there's a tidal wave. And I just like, <laughs> I was like, just been like, I've just been rolling in the after wake of the tidal wave for the rest of this week. And I'm slowly mm. slowing down, but I'm still rolling a bit, and uh, that's how I feel. Bro, but, you're gonna do great. Uh, well, that's that's what I'm intending. It will be a lot of hard work. Well, I'm I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. If, but you know, you put in the effort and, and you put in the time, and that's basically how hobbies work too. Oh right. yeah. <laughs> well, also, I was thinking regarding hobbies is like, yeah, you put in the effort and you put in the time at work. Yeah. But then, when you leave work, what do you do? Netflix until you fall asleep. No. Nah. Interesting story. So, as as some of you may know, I'm in a band called The Sations. The Sations. A little bit of a plug. The Sations. Check the link. Check the... Not a station check there. Check the description for a bit of a link there. One T. Um, thanks, Tom. <laughs> Always such a supporter of our chosen name. Um, <laughs> so, we had this band called The Sations. Our first ever song, before we, we even were a band, oh. was just was my wife, Laura, and I. We were sitting at home one evening, and we are like, you know what? Why don't we not watch Netflix for a night? You know, maybe consider actually instead of our daily routine of watching Netflix, we will sit down and write a song. Mm-hmm. So we did it. That song went on to to become our, our first ever song, "The God Who oh Knew Our Pain." You know what's going to happen in a few years' time? People are going to be watching this. They're like, "This is how, this is how the stations began," because they kept <laughs> the name. They kept the name. And everyone will have to go back to the Gregorian Chat podcast to find that out. So yes. Yeah. But they also do the same thing about the Catholic Life podcast featuring Dom Maldier. Stop it. <laughs> well, that Which is great, by the way. You should yeah, check it out. Yeah, if you, yeah you definitely should. You should subscribe to it. Mm. The Catholic Life podcast. Mm, mm. See, he's not talking about my name too much. Anyway, uh, that didn't. My, my hobby didn't grow out of such a beautiful, creative story. Mine was more, Dom has left me, <laughs> I'm all uh-huh. alone, and I really like podcasting. So now I have to work out how to do this on my own. Well, you know, Jess could also do one. She could call it the Catholic Wife Podcast. Oh, my gosh! <laughs> Stay tuned. You have to pay Coming me soon. for that name. <laughs> you can get the royalties off, uh, off my subscribers. Right. I wish I had time to do so many, as many podcasts. I kind of knew this would happen eventually, but I knew that what I was doing was, like, forsaking my master's uh, and my teaching to do, to do podcasts, which was just it wasn't right. Well, yeah, because, I mean, I suppose spending your time intentionally does go into being hobbies and I think that's where we need to spend most of our time but it, yeah. it's our work as well that great quote that I always uh, give of Martin Luther uh, <laughs> Christian Shoemaker doesn't make shoes with crosses on he makes good shoes so go out and make good shoes guys um, I reckon you've probably used that at least 20 it's times it's a good quote over the space of about 65 episodes and you know what uh, Emeritus Pope Benedict always says the world the world oh I've lost it <laughs> I think you know what Emeritus Pope Benedict is. He says lots of things. Just read Pope Benedict's yeah. work. We call for greatness. Yeah. So, uh, anyway. So, using our time intentionally. Yes. <laughs> like we are doing right now. Um, because I feel like there are so many things that want to divide our attention. You know, mm. there's there's the media. Um, but even uh, even in a place like Auckland, but wherever you are, but especially places like big cities like Auckland, mm. um, I find that in, 
we have to, and this is not just because we're super popular, right. um, we have to really like book our time in to, to make time for all the people that we know and, mm. and that we see on a regular mm. basis. Mm. So it's like, oh, what are we doing this weekend? Well, we have to set that aside because we've got to hang out with these people we haven't seen in months. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it can, be really, it can be really difficult to find time for your hobbies. Mm. And I think as you were saying, like, you know, you have your work and then when you get home, you often don't feel like, like doing your hobbies. Right, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then there's definitely this kind of attitude in, at least in New Zealand society, of like a lot of people have a dream about doing something creatively or artistically mm. or mm. even just uh, practically. Like it might just be a practic- more practical-based hobby, mm. like building furniture, um, though it still has a creative element. You know, and they're kind of like, well, if you could do that full-time as a job, mm. then they would do that. Yeah. But that's never going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, either because, you know, New Zealand's not a big enough market or... But I think there's also a trap yeah. because, like, with my photography, like, I do photography because I enjoy it and that's why I primarily started doing it. Then I was like, right, let's make something of this. Let's see if I can make money from it. And it's like, it didn't kill it, but I think it just took the focus away of, like, okay, now I need to do this as a job, so I need to do it in a certain way so that certain people want me to do it. So then, And it's like, okay, now it's not a hobby, now it's a job. And, like, so I'm not doing that with my uh, photography, but, like... It is still something that I still enjoy doing, and part of that is posting it online. And if someone says, "Hey, will you take pictures for me for money?" Brilliant, but right. it's again, it ha- has to stay as a hobby. Uh, and I think you know, with that comes you know, uh, perfecting it and yeah. improving improving it. And uh, at the moment, I'm doing this thing called Exodus Ninety. You might have heard about it. I've probably told you about it a whole oh, heap. Yeah. And it's it's like it's this it's this men's retreat. It's fantastic. Go look it up. But one of the things that I've, it's taught me is how much time I have because it's like no movies, no Netflix. Hmm. So I'm not allowed to do it. When I get home, what can I do? So I I've, I've read The Lord of the Rings. Just about to finish that. Read it. It's the best. So you just piece you, of writing ever. So but, no movies, no Netflix. You just stream TV shows. Yeah, yeah. Illegally. No, no, I don't. I don't watch any TV shows. Is the point. <laughs> And so I found that, like, I get home and it's like, I've got, like, hours before before I, I get tired enough yeah. to go to sleep. So what can I do? And so, and also, like, um, just before I went to, so I started uni, I found myself at work. And basically, I had, I'd handed over to the new team and there was little for me to practically do because, you know, the new team needs to do all the work. So mm. I found myself, like, I've got this time. And, like, the temptation is, like, okay, I'll just waste it. Um, but I decided to instead think, how can I use this time? Mm. How is this time a gift? And then that led to the the organization of the Catholic Life podcast, which was really difficult because it turns out Dom does a lot with regards to Gregorian chat. So I had to learn how to do all that, which was fun. But like it was it was it was challenging because I had to learn a new skill. But it was also challenging because I was putting myself out there mm. on my own. And the first podcast I did for the Gregory, uh, for the um, Catholic Life podcast, I filmed it three times. It took me three times to, right. to to actually get it. But like, what was important was that I started, and then I made the mistakes, and I learned from it. And that's just how I work. Yeah, and I think that um, with uh, with the like high intense media culture that exists nowadays. There are so many stories floating out there um, that people will put out of like, this is me and this is me being successful. Mm. <clears throat> that you kind of lose lose track, lose sight of, of all the hard work that goes into getting to that point. For instance, um, like even, I don't know, whether it's people who have like a bodybuilding account, whether it's people who have like a music account, all that kind of thing. You know, like they, most of the time they'll spend posting about the really high impact, cool events that they're doing. Like if you're a musician, it would mm. be like, you know, uh, like I used to post, I used to be like, oh, I need to do more events like uh, World Youth Day Auckland, you know, mm. so that I can mm. post like a picture of me on the big stage and people will be like, oh man, he's like, must be playing legit gigs now and all that kind of stuff. Um, but the, the reality is that you have to do a few, you have to do more than a few like pretty simple gigs mm. before you actually get a chance to do something big. Mm. Um, so that would be that would be the first thing I think is like, I guess my reflections from the last. So it's not like year and a bit. It's not important what you do; it's that you do it. Is what you're well, saying. I think a bit of both. Definitely, the fact that you are doing it is important. Mm. Um, don't expect to be able to start up anything, any kind of um, product page, whether it's photography, art, music. Mm. Uh, personal fitness, any of those kinds of things, even like a prayer channel, you know, yeah, yeah. without 
doing the hard yards. Yes. Like yeah. for instance, um, as a as a developing musician, you've kind of just got to take any gig that you can get, paid mm. or paid or unpaid. Mm. Um, eventually, you'll realise that your time is, you know, your time is pretty important, um, and you have to have a certain amount of confidence so that when people start asking you to play certain gigs, and it's like, okay, well, I either play this one or this one because mm. I can't do two in one week, so maybe I'll have to ask them about a price, or maybe I'll have to. You know, and those are things that you know. As Christians, we're not exempt from all of those things. It's mm. not just like, oh, we're Christians, so we don't have to do the the kind of awkward things like talking to people about how much it's going to cost, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Or paying for things in the first yeah. place. We can't. Like God will provide for sure, but you still, you still have to pay for things. And I think it's recognizing, like, in, in recognizing the dignity of the human person, it's recognizing the dignity of yourself, and it's like you know, treat others as you wish to be treated. It's like, mm. well. Yes, that means I should treat others with dignity. That's because I wish to be treated with dignity. And so in that, it's like, okay, I'm going to take value in your in your work, in, yeah. in, in your creativity, in your hobby, whether it's like, you know, something as crazy as like doing gigs or if it's something as like uh, chill as just doing modeling at home or something yeah. like that. And it's like saying, actually, I'm going to take value in that. I'm going to, I'm going to encourage you in that. So therefore... You should expect the same reaction to to yourself and like you know actually what mm. i do is of worth and therefore like when it comes yeah. to doing gigs it's like because i've had the same thing with photography um mm. a friend of mine said hey will you do a, f- a photo shoot for me and i was like yeah sure so, uh, what, what's the price and i'm like oh no uh how, i mean because i'm not a professional so how right. should i charge and uh you know shana was saying to me he's like look if you're being paid for it you are a professional so just just charge them or they're expecting and they're expecting you to be professional so if you don't yeah. even if you don't feel like one you need to get your a and g and become yeah professional. yeah yeah <laughs> well yeah if yeah i think yeah it comes with the attitude as well like act professionally and uh yeah then but, but and as well like having a certain degree of humility um and trying to do things the, as best as you can but also realizing that like your art will improve so even for that first song that we did mm. um we recorded it in our bedroom just using my one microphone and garage band mm. right so we did those parts it was like <laughs> i took a bed and a bunch of sheets and i um and i put them up in our wardrobe yeah and our house wasn't insulated we were renting this like dunner yep. of an old place it had maggots falling out of the ceiling fantastic um so this is very much like a been been there kind of story um so that was where we started off and so we we kind of recorded the track and we're like yeah this sounds good you know this, this, yeah. sounds, this sounds really good let's send it, or it sounds good enough we'll send yeah. it away to a good friend of ours who, who then like mixed and mastered it and gave it back we're like wow this is incredible <laughs> like when i listen to the track now um because because we've been going into um parachute studios and working with um this guy called nick manders who's like oh one awesome. of the best producers in new zealand oh wow um, it's, it's it's just crazy just like because he has such high expectations when you're in the studio for 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 you so you need to have them for yourself like he was able to push to push us and me me especially like speaking from my own perspective to to like sing better than i thought i could sing he'd be like no do it again you know okay do it again try doing this with you with your vocals kind of thing um and so it's to, to the point where i was like whoa like and, and Laura was like, man, I, didn't, I haven't heard that before. <laughs> I didn't know you could sing. I didn't know you could sing like that. <laughs> and, um, but it was really cool. It was a really cool experience. So mm. that was like, I guess, putting yourself um, in a position where you're, you, you're reliant on other people as well to push mm. you to. Um, and, the, I mean, one of the biggest lessons I've had from this is in terms of relying on other people mm. um, is that uh, my wife, Laura, has very much been the one who, who got this band started. She mm. was like... Um, how about we we're, we're going to be playing for a life team conference how about we play that song that we wrote we asked him we can play it I was like oh nah you know I, that just feels a bit you know like self promotional to like mm. put yourself out there and be like we're going to play a song we did she's like no it's not she's yeah, like yeah. it's just wanting to give you know the stuff that you yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the stuff that you think is good that you've made so so we did it and the response was like amazing and then from that we're like maybe we should make a band maybe we should mm. do this like because we'd love to do it for God so she was really like an enabler for me, yeah. um, and then and even from there it was like okay, well maybe we, sh- we should record it, and she's like let's just do it. Yeah, I was like oh well, shouldn't we wait till we've got like, you know, a proper recording gear? She's like no, we'll just do it at home, you know, taking those steps, and then I, and then she's like why don't we make a music video for it? And I was like yeah. really that that would be like a little too much, don't you think? And, she, yeah. and so anyway, we did all these things. Yeah, um, and like the video got like 
34,000 views on Facebook yeah. and you know and but it was all it was very much a leap of faith right there you go in terms of saying you know uh, sure like it may not be perfect it's a bit of a risk to yeah. put it out there but let's just do it and see what yeah. happens and I think you know just getting up and, and doing something is the most uh, it's the best advice I can give anyone mm. that has a desire to do a hobby or a craft or something it's like just just start just start like if you want to be a photographer but you don't have twelve hundred dollars for a camera you've got a camera phone start taking pictures because a big part of photography is having an eye for it if you want to um record music but all, and all you've got is just like an, an old dingy guitar get some strings and just start playing because you need to mm. have that and like if you want to start modeling just get some clay and, and go for it and i think making a mistake make like failing and making mistakes is it's it's, it's, it's so integral to humanity to, to growing as a person, uh, Father Mike Schmitz gives this talk on the being having like uh, being anti fragile, and mm. he talks about there's this there's this guy and he, he realized that there's, there's there's different types of um, things in the world and there's things that will just give way when you you uh, break into them like a piece of wood if it hits with an axe mm. the wood will give way, and the other type of things is the axe the axe won't change, mm. but then there's there's things and the only organism that this uh, fits to is humans mm. where they will meet something difficult and then they won't give way and they won't stay the same but they'll change and they'll grow mm. and there's no word for this so he came up with this word anti-fragile mm -hmm. and that works into our hobbies of like it works into our whole life of like I don't know how to do something so I'm going to try it and when I fail I'm going to sit back and say okay how yeah. can I do this better and pushing ourselves yeah. I mean that story you're telling us about the that guy Nick like pushing you to sing better yeah. we need people around us to say that's crap here's a good way of doing it uh, or even just saying that's crap and it's like right I need to find a better way of doing it yeah. and yeah. like being able to receive criticism as a spurring on to do something good is, 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 is essential I'd say yeah and it, yeah just loving what you're doing I mean mm. someone who really loves what they lo loves their craft will be someone that is constantly looking for ways to improve it. Mm. Um, so if your thing is, is if your thing is like oil based painting, you know, you could just experiment with oil based painting. Different and, types and, of oils. But like a whole bunch of people have have probably done articles and YouTube videos and all that kind of stuff mm. about things they've discovered. Yeah. So it's yeah, like, yeah. you know, be like an expert at your craft. And even like even as a as a musician I'm kind of thinking as a guitarist, like mm just i've been like watching more videos about about guitars and, and how they sound and all that kind of stuff and that's not necessarily really important for for being a recording artist but for me i'm like i really yeah. love music and i love guitar especially and so i want to look into those different things mm. um but yeah i'd say that, that that's a big thing uh what, your point was great about how you need to be able to um be, put yourself in a position to accept criticism mm. um, and have that be a, a, a regular thing yeah yeah know? yeah a regular thing for for your art um, and really when you're doing a gig you'll, you'll be getting feedback whether it's vocal or not yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah if a crowd doesn't engage with something so f so for instance um, over the summer we were like man we we should just apply to see if we can get and play at festival one yeah that would be our first gig as a band yeah, like, yeah. we never played anywhere so I'm like it's a big risk um, we were really, really blessed. We got we got a really good slot mm -hmm. on a really good stage, at, um, and so we're like, man, we've, this is quite a lot of pressure. We've never performed before, um, but we're just going to take the ball by, by the horns and try and do it. Um, so we got up there on stage. We we're really nervous, um, and we we found out that we kind of just like blasted through our set, got to the end, and we're like, we've got we've got like like you still got five or ten minutes. Uh, so it was really awkward because they were like. You know, it was like, what was that encore? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Know, what song should we play? And some people were like, oh, play, you know, little voices, play this one, play the first one, play the last one. So we're like, oh, oh, uh, okay, uh, we'll play the first one again. And yeah. it was like, dude, and we played our song again and whatever. But um, also, we were like super emotional. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, my sister Rachel, like, the song was very, very close to, to her. So she she tried to get the song started the first three times was almost like a false start because she yeah. was like just crying yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit of nerves and also a bit of like yeah. emotion from the song yeah, yeah. and a lot of people were like that's a really that's a really authentic kind yeah. of thing to see on a stage um, and I'm like that's cool and at the same time you know that was just something that we learned I mean the biggest thing we learned was that afterwards we hadn't really done any plugging 
Right. We had a a sign that said the stations, but we hadn't been like, all right, guys, um, we're the stations. So just, you know, able to stop the show for a little bit and be like, um, you know, don't be afraid to check us out on on Instagram. In fact, go open your phone now and go to Instagram and look at the stations. And and the event had also advertised us as the stations, as we often get referred to. Just the So And we hadn't, like, done our best to correct them on that. So some people were like, oh, we couldn't find your music. Um, and I was like, ah, stuff like that is really annoying. Mm. Afterwards, we, we learned a lot from that about like um, mm. not being afraid to, to plug yourself. Because when Shana did the Heart of the Artist yeah. um, event a couple of weeks ago, there was this guy uh, called Pyramid Park doing his music. He's from England. Mm. And he just decided to do music as a full time thing. So he's gone all out. He's got albums. He had oh, like wow. vinyl. He bought along like f- two free download vouchers to this little catholic show and i was really impressed you know um and you know he'd obviously thought a lot about it what it takes when you're on stage or Mm. when you're pursuing your hobby Mm. to to have that confidence to be like hey this is what i'm doing i think it's pretty good yeah you know i have seven thousand followers now they must think Mm. it's pretty good so why don't you do it too yeah one of one of the things that like just came to mind uh, i think it's really spurred me on is because like i've started this degree now and that's like nine to five i'm gonna have a baby in a couple of weeks oh my and that's gonna gosh. be 24 7 and so my life's pretty hectic right now 24 7 yeah actually no um yes yeah, so my life's gonna be pretty mental forever now and uh <laughs> and so like you know the kind of the human side of me is like look you can't manage this you can't have a baby and be at uni and have a hobby so you're gonna have to drop the hobby but something like actually doing a podcast this has been something that's been on my heart for like six years mm. when I first came to Chaplaincy I was like we need a Catholic radio station and I went and asked my, my friend mm. to research what you need and he's like oh you need all this equipment it was like thousands of dollars and I was like well that's not going to happen <laughs> and then like you know praise the lord Dom came along and uh, he showed me how to record and he showed me how to film and then we we're like oh this is so doable so we just start, we started with it and now it's something that now I know how to do it I can't not. Mm. And so God puts things on our hearts. And so, like, I think, like, us millennials were like, oh, I want to do some, my job is something I want the, to be that I love. Mm. I want to love my job. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And therefore, we only pick things that we love doing, which is fine and well, but, like, sometimes what we love doing is a hobby. And you can't get paid for it. Well, you maybe you could get paid for it, but you'd have to be, you know, it'd take a lot of investment. So how are you going to get to that point where you can get, where you can make that investment? And you just get a normal job which pays for your hobbies, but it's paying attention mm. to that thing that's on your heart, which is our hobbies. And for, for you, it's the music. It's like, if God has put this on my heart, God is telling me to do this. Yeah. So why am I not doing it one hundred percent? Why am I not giving yeah. God my all? And it's like, right, I need to, I need to really buckle down. And I need to be like, right, I need to do this. And by all means, pay attention to yourself. It's like, okay, I've got thirty gigs this week. Yeah. And like, well, you can't do thirty gigs in a week. So, then you need to start like praying through it, discerning, and doing what's right. But what is right is doing a hobby, exactly. Choosing to do it and then actually sticking to it, uh, accepting criticism so that you can grow from it and challenging yourself, mm. and uh, just getting out and there and doing having, it. Really. Having people close to you that will enable you. Oh yeah, definitely. Like I couldn't, Shana. yeah, I couldn't have done the podcast well without Dom for starters, and then without Shana for this one. Uh, she's been my greatest cheerleader. Because other people can see, you know, people who are honest with you, and they can see your potential, and, and like give you that that upbuilding that you need, but also a bit of criticism if you need that as well. Mm. Um, my last point what was I going to say. Ah, oh, my last point for this podcast would be um, something i think it was that randy russ randy russ the ceo mm. of um, life teen international said super cash he was like you know you guys want to be good christian musicians or you want to be good christian artists or you want to be mm. um you know really good christian uh, photographers or mm-hmm. fill in the bank blank the first thing that you need to be is a good christian amen um oh, kind randy of dovetails russ. kind of dovetails in with that martin luther uh that quote that just doesn't go away um yeah. But yeah, that really struck me. I was like, yeah, if I'm going to be writing uh, good Christian songs that are going to resonate with Christians Mm. uh, and non-Christians alike, you know, I need to be a good Christian. So I need to prioritize um, my spiritual life because really, if we don't have a faith that's brimming over, as the Mm. scripture says, you know, that your the the gospel or the the readings from last week 
um, on Sunday, like from the the surplus of the heart, you know, mm. the nas speaks. And in the same way with with hobbies and with arts and things like that, we we can't give what we don't have. Um, but the real joy, like the real quality stuff, is that stuff that just comes from mm. this like overflowing of our creativity and our faith life that's mm. going on. People are like, oh my gosh, I just want to like eat that stuff up, mm. like, put it down in my mouth. So, um, in short, just be a good Christian. Be a good Christian and spend your time wisely. Realize that it's a gift from God and let's just use it for his glory. That's been our podcast. It's been a while, but we came back and we did it. Yeah. The shutter just closed? Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! See you next time. God bless. <laughs>